midterm outcomes are usually shaped largely by the popularity and standing of the president and whether people think the country's going in the right direction. Well, you look at this, my understanding is that the vast majority of Americans do not believe the country's going in the right direction. President Biden is not enjoying a strong standing and popularity that was a predicted red wave. In Australia, that would mean the left side of politics, but in America, it means Republican. A predicted red wave, it turned into something like a trickle, and we still don't know yet whether the Senate will flip or not. In a short question, what happened? Well, it's a good question. I don't think anybody quite can figure it out because, as you say, a president in his first four-year term has a midterm election where one-third of the Senate, the upper house, and all of the representatives in the lower house are up for election. Human nature being what it is, usually candidates promise a lot and they don't they don't perform as well as their expectations. So traditionally, a president loses about 25 seats in the House and two or three Senate seats. And then we have historical um, trends that can either diminish or amplify that fact. And one of them is the president's uh, poll ratings. If a president is around 40%, then we get into uh, 1994 Bill Clinton territory or 2010 Barack Obama territory where you are Donald Trump 2018, all of whom had about 40% approval and they lost respectively 63 seats, 53 seats, and I think 40 seats. So when Joe Biden is around 40%, and his main agendas on the border, inflation, fuel, crime, foreign policy are polling below 40, uh, 45%, 40% approval. And they are also polling in the mind of the voter as the most important issues. Everybody looked at this as a perfect storm. They said weak president, traditionally in a vulnerable position in his first midterm, has it, uh, brought in agendas that are unpopular. So we're forecasting anywhere from 35 to 50 seats and anywhere from three to four to five lost Senate seats. There is one caveat that I think is very important to, to add to this calculus. And that is, in the case of the House, it was when they, when I talk about major inroads of the out party, they're usually behind. They don't have control of the House. In this case, the Republicans didn't have control of the House, but they were only seven down. So what I'm getting at is if he had, they had won 25 or 30 seats, that would have been analogous in their final tally to something like their enviable positions in 2010 in 2000, uh, 1994, where they had they were way down, and then they had to go way up. Here they were basically even. The other thing to remember is that the Senate flips over every two years with only one third of its members, and the way it works is that sometimes they can be vastly asymmetrical in the number of Democrats or Republicans out of that 33 cohort or up. In this particular case, this was one of the years that Republicans had to uh, field and protect a lot of offices that were up for re-election. And the Democrats had very little exposure, meaning the incumbents were mostly Republican and the challengers and the, re and so their, their existing seats were pretty much safe because incumbents usually win, but the, the Republicans have a lot of exposures. Nonetheless, the Republicans were hoping given the, the unpopularity of Biden um, to win, as I said, 40, 40 seats or so up and maybe three to five Senate seats. And what we're looking at tonight, I'm in Arizona tonight in a hotel, I'm giving a lecture. Uh, I did one this morning on the election to one tomorrow. It looks to me like they will be up anywhere from 10 to 20 seats in the House, and they'll be lucky if they take the Senate. It's right now looking it, it's starting to look like it'll be 50, 50, uh, 49, 51, 51, 49, depending on who wins Georgia, which will have a special election because it has a unique and kind of perverse law that says that no one can be elected unless they have a, a, a majority of over 50%. Herschel Walker and Warnock will be 
doing the same thing again in December, and that will determine, I think, the fate of the Senate. And the reason is, so why did this happen, John? That's what we'll, we're trying to find out. And uh, I think, in a nutshell, the Republicans felt that because five or six issues were polling the most important in the mind of the voters, and those issues uh, were not polling well for the Biden, they were going to seize on them. And then they said that Democrats had seized on abortion because of the repeal of the Roe versus Wade was back to the states. And that was not an issue they felt that most voters cared about. And so everybody left and right had said this was a classic mistake on the part of the Democrats. And the polls showed that, that the Republicans had almost caught up by early October. They were in the polls, in most cases, ahead of the Democrats. But what apparently happened was Joe Biden, two weeks before the election took place, that is the last two, last week of October and the first of November, he tried a radically different tact. He decided that he was going to run on insurrection and democracy dies in darkness. And he made the premise in a very series of sharp speeches that if Democrats lost, then democracy was over with. In fact, we had presidential historian Michael Beschlaw said, they will kill your children. It was that type of rhetoric. If you let these people who storm the Capitol take control, and they will, they're election denialists, they're nihilists, they're anarchists. And then the Paul Pelosi attack that happened just a, at the end of October, they said that this deranged ex-hippie nudist commune homeless illegal alien was actually a MAGA adherent and therefore he acted to attack the Pelosi home and the deals of that attack we're still not completely aware of apparently, but he acted out of right wing rhetoric of the sort that Joe Biden said we had to crush and then they went full, they went whole hog so to speak on abortion and said they frame the abortion debate in the sense that we want to protect young women who will die because even though Roe Ro versus Wade turns it over to the states, these lunatic states will bar abortion and young women will die uh, trying to have back alley abortions. And apparently from what we know from post polls, that those two issues galvanized young people and single women 20 to 30 that pretty much had not given an indication they were going to outperform their demographics, and they did. They got very enthused and angry and turned out. And then on the other hand, the Republicans who thought they had these issues that everybody cared about learned that younger people did not care about them as much as they did. And more importantly, while they, while they hammered Biden on the, the price of gas, inflation, crime, they never really came out with a contract of America and said, if you vote for us, this is what we're going to do. We're going to open up Anwar. We're going to get Keystone going. Uh, we're going to get federal prosecutors to go into the cities and make sure that these criminals are not let out. We'll charge them with racketeering or federal offenses, whatever. They gave no solutions. And so people said, well, they're just they're just yelling, and we agree they're yelling, but they're not telling us what we're going to do. And there were other extraneous uh, force multipliers of, of that as well. Jo uh, Donald Trump, I think, quite unwisely, oh, a week before the election, started attacking um, Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor, who was very popular. And, and in fact, he's the bright spot. He had a lands landslide victory. And he said that he was Ron, uh, Ron de Sanctimonious. And he then later he made fun of his wife. He said he would bring out dirt against uh, DeSantis, et cetera. And then uh, that was unwise. And then he hinted that he was going to announce his uh, intention to run. That may have galvanized left-wing voters who despised Trump to get out and vote who might otherwise have sat it out. And it might have turned off DeSantis supporters from voting for Trump candidate. Thank you.